That's good, Victor. It should be even better by two o'clock. No, Sherry is bringing them to me in about five minutes. Okay, au revoir. I trust you have not come back for more money. I told you, what are you doing with that thing? That's not going to solve. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It. A casino director's number has at last come up. Nothing personal, but for any of you who are gamblers, it's probably something you've been looking forward to for years. Now, the scene is Monte Carlo, and to help you solve who done it this week, our punters are three to one, and welcome back to Bill Maynard. <laughs> Ten to one, but a certain bet for a place, Lindsay DePaul. And at six to one, but don't worry, that's each way, Lisa Goddard. <laughs> and uh, Evan's favorite, you've guessed it, Patrick Moher. <laughs> um, mind you, I must say that it was Lisa who got all the clues right last week. So get it right again this week, Lisa. Oh. Yeah. Now, don't forget, somebody is bound to lie. So here comes the story again. It's the private room of a Monte Carlo casino. Monsieur Jules has had his chips. And you have to work out who done it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry I have to stop this game. You may pick up your bets, but we cannot continue. And who says so? I do, madame. My name is Ferdinand Charrier. I run the security in this private room of the casino. Now, I'm afraid that our casino director, Monsieur Jules, has been kilted. What? Killed Come in his man. office. Now, the police will be in a moment, but in the meantime, I would like some questions. Questions? Answers? Answers. <laughs> What's it got to do with us? And nobody has gone in or out of this area for the last hour. Therefore, one of you must be the murderer. How oh, about yourself, or Ferdinand, or the croupier? Uh, none of the staff has left this room since the game started. Exactly. How do you know he's only just being killed? Because I'm very clever, madame, and he's still warm. Now, if you don't mind, I will ask the questions. We probably find he shot himself. These frogs get carried away at times. <laughs> I don't remember saying he was shot, monsieur. Yes, well... Uh, I was just having a stab in the dark. Stab? <laughs> he was shot, murdered, and the right hand drawer on his desk was empty. That's where he used to keep the OUIs. <laughs> IOUs. <laughs> what is more, 100,000 francs worth of chips is missing from the top of his desk, so we can presume that the motive is robbery. The only good thing so far is that some of those IOUs must have been mine. Really, Count Valerie? Um, Perhaps you could tell us how much you owe. Oh, we see, volunteer, uh, not in front of all these people. Mind you, we would have to trust you as to the right amount because all the copies have been taken. Raymond, Raymond, the Count volunteer the information. Pardon, Monsieur le Comte. Non siete preoccupi, le sono molto grato. Un momento, prego. When I went into the hall earlier, I happened to overhear something that might be useful. Simon. I'm sorry, I cannot extend your credit any further. And as for your idea of me lending you some of these chips, oh, this casino would be closed down if I did that sort of thing.
I was looking for Simone, you see. Always I am looking for Simone. But as she was nowhere to be seen, I came back here to wait for her. Ah, uh, yes, your lovely lady of this evening, Mademoiselle Simone Lefebvre. No doubt you were just sitting down. In the ladies' room. In the la... <laughs> yes. Uh, Count Valdery, was Monsieur Jules talking to a man or a woman? Well, I did not wait long enough to hear the other person speaking. Don't worry. I will find out for you. Now, Madame and Monsieur, this table is 50,000 francs down so far this evening. So in order to find the missing chips, I shall need to know how much you all started with. Over my dead body. Well, I think one is enough for this evening, Madame Pardon. <laughs> my late husband wasn't an international lawyer for nothing, dear. That information is under wraps, or I sue you for everything you've got. But we know how much you all started with, Madame. Do we? Yes. We issued the chips, remember? Yes, of course, of course. So all we're asking for is a little co-op, uh, co uh, help. <laughs> if you could just work out for us how much you're up or down. And another thing, Mr. Nosey. Yes, Madame Parker? How come you know all our names off, Pat, huh? Because I make it my business, Madame, to remember people's names. For instance, your escort this evening is Monsieur... Jean-Claude Gier. Correct. And our English friends here are Monsieur Bottomley. Bottomley, if you don't mind. Oh, pardon, Monsieur. Accent on the bottom. And your, uh, how you say in English, uh, bit of stuff? We don't say that. No, no, you don't say that. No, it's uh, Mademoiselle Irene Rose, hein? Huh? Enchanté. Mm. Now then, did any of you this evening go to the toilet? Oh, you see, to get to it, you have to go past the director's office. Uh, hey, nosy. Uh, just to show willing, dear. I was uh, 17,000 francs up, and Jean-Claude... Jean-Claude, behave yourself, dear. Oh, no, Sherry. How much were you up? Oh, the chips. Uh, 4,000. <laughs> Thank you, madame. Look, if it's any help, uh, I went out into the hall to... Uh, well, uh, perhaps I'd better tell you about my little habit. I'm not sure I want to hear about your little habit. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a little routine I have, you know, to bring me luck at the tables. That was your Madame Monsieur. Uh, and, and the butler. Ah, uh, 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 Oh, not too bad. We're still up a bit, I think. Here, you better pay for a while. I'll give Ruby a call. Oh, you're not going through that hive of chip rubbish again, are you? Of course. If ever we lost the lot, I've always got yeah. enough stashed away to get us home yeah, with. Oh, you are a superstitious old goat. Thank well, get on with you, then. Don't get excited, Mr. Jules. It was only Ginny's little gag. Anyway, thanks a million. Oh, well, that's not quite that much. And then I phoned the wife. Ruby, that is, in Brighouse, Yorkshire. And do you remember what time you spoke to your wife, monsieur? Oh, yes, yes, because just before I come off, she got me to shut up so she could get the football results from News at 10. Aha, uh -huh. Brick House. Huh? Well, Mademoiselle Woods, so you apparently went outside as well. Yeah. Well, just before Joe went out, I'd been to uh, powder my nose like, that's all. Powder? What? Just a moment. I was passing by those doors about then, and I happened to notice you were coming out of the director's office. What? Oh, no, that was a silly mistake I made. Just ignorance of the language, that's all. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. I thought that was the lady's loo. Pardon? Mademoiselle. Ah. The next door along, mademoiselle. <laughs> so you 
see? It was just a stupid mistake. Yes, but why did you go into the director's office? Well, on the door, it's written priv with an accent. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was French for privy. <laughs> <laughs> privy in English means the loo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, well, Mademoiselle Woods, when you were standing in the doorway of the director's office, uh, did you happen to notice Madame Parker at all? No, I didn't. Aha! Well, Madame Parker? Were you in the director's office? And if so, why? <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It. We are in Monte Carlo, where yesterday it was Patrick de Baye who done it in his Elf Tyrol. But the time in our story is early March, and somebody has got 100,000 francs of chips too many. Now, no cheating now with pencils and paper. You should be able to work that out in your heads. Well, Madame Parker, you heard Mr. Bottomley's story. Were you in the director's office or not? Oh, look, Nosey, there's nothing to get excited about. I just had a, a bad streak on the table earlier, so I went to see Mr. Jules about some credit. So what do you say, Mr. Jules? With a bit of luck, I'll win it all back in a few minutes. I'm afraid I shall have to limit you to 30,000, Madame, the same figure you started with this evening. Hey, how did you know that? I keep a close eye on what amounts are issued all the time. Why, you cunning old French fox, you. <laughs> all right, all right, agreed, agreed. You know, I'll bet that little girl who came in here earlier didn't really come in by accident. I can assure you, madame, she got the doors wrong. Oh. Now, if you would just sign here, please. All righty. There we are. Fine. Now, I'll give you your copy to hand to Monsieur Cherrier, the gentleman with the ribbon in his lapel in the casino, and I keep our copy here for records. Great. Well, thank you. Say, hey, why don't we drink to it in some of that champagne of yours? That is mineral water, madame. Oh. If you would like some. Uh, no, thanks. All this money, and you're getting high on mineral water. Hey, why don't I just take 30,000 francs worth of these chips right now and save a bit of time? No, no, I'm sorry, madame. I am using them to check against my accounts here. Oh, come on, Foxy. What difference does it make? I'll just borrow some of these. Madame, I must ask you to put those down at once. All right, all right, I'm going. We have strict rules here. Just don't get excited, Mr. Jules. It was only Ginny's little gag. Anyway, thanks a million. Uh, well, perhaps not quite that much. And that, I trust, explains my little visit to his office for you. Except, madame, that you never brought me the credit note. You see, I am the gentleman with the ribbon. Oh, yes, isn't it cute? Oh, thank you. Anyway, I didn't give you the credit note because we suddenly hit on a winning streak, didn't we, Jean-Claude? Honey, will you come back to Mama before I send you right straight back to that garage where I found you? You see, uh, when I was in the office, Jean-Claude started winning. And when I got back, we really rode high. Didn't we, honey pie? Uh, yes. In fact, I told you already, we are 21,000 up on our original steak. My original steak, honey pie. Uh, yes. And are you sure the director was drinking mineral water? Oh, yes, yes. I can't stand the stuff. It was strange, because when I found him at 10.45, there was a brandy glass on the floor beside him. Good point, Ferdinand. Uh, by the way, for your records, I started with uh, 65,000. I'm down 20,000. I think you lost more than that, Count Valare, while I was watching you. Ah, but if you were watching all the time, smart Alec, you'd have seen I won most of it back. I'll ask your croupier if you don't believe me. Raymond, Raymond, stop picking. The only amount that matters is what they have now. Well, we've got 99,000, 49,000, oh, that's profit. So you didn't need this lucky chip, huh? Is, is that the one I hid out there in that plant pot? No, I'm not even sure that it is yours. I found this amongst the house winnings. Uh, yes. uh, monsieur, if this 
chip was retrieved from the pot out there, then maybe we'll find that. Got it. You started with 50,000 francs. Uh, sh shall I check it? Y yes, by all means. Dig away, Raymond. Dig away. Poor fellow. He hasn't got a garden, you see. Now then, Monsieur Bottomley, I want you to think very carefully. You could have brought that chip back when I saw you re-entering the gaming room. Any more beds? Hello. Chérie? Uh, uh, yes, Monsieur Jules. Have you got the interim figures yet? Uh, uh, no, Monsieur Jules. It's only uh, 10.32. Uh, 10 and you said 10.45, remember? Oh, yes, so I did. 10.45, then. Yes, 10.45. Ferdinand? Yes, monsieur. Uh, have you seen my uh, young lady anywhere? Uh, no, monsieur le comte. Uh, perhaps she's stepped out for a breath of fresh air. Uh, maybe, but that gigologie has also stepped out. <laughs> uh, well, I will let you know if I see them, monsieur. Non è comico. Ci sono papagalli dappertutto. So you see, monsieur, you could have quite easily put your dirty little chip back into play again. So I will ask you once more. Monsieur, uh, look! Look what I found hidden in the earth on the other side of the plant. Just as I thought. Ah, uh, yes, you see? Ah, now, Raymond, you better put that down somewhere safe and sound. And be very careful with your fingerprints. Now, look, I didn't go near that plant again. Why don't you ask Love? Lover boy over there, where he went for his breath of fresh air. Monsieur Gillet, will you stop doing that when I'm asking questions? You are definitely going back to that garage, honey pie. Well, perhaps you can tune up by telling us where you were, Monsieur Gillet. You mean when I went out? Uh, yes. Well, I noticed Simon here going out to the ladies' room. I went out into the passage to try and meet up with Simone as she came out of the ladies' room. I heard someone coming, so I slipped into the alcove as a safety measure. But when I looked out again, the passage was empty. And then Simone came out. Oh. Simone, isn't it? Oui. My name is Jean-Claude. I was wondering if you were busy for lunch tomorrow. Well, I was thinking of going swimming. Good. I've got a very nice lilo. <laughs> so you see, it was just a harmless little game I was playing. That does it. You've had your chips. So, I was right. You were having assignations with my Simone. But we haven't done anything. Yet. Yet. Hello, many guardi. What bothers me is whether the director's glass contained mineral water or brandy. Dio me salvi, dai dilettanti. What does it matter whether the broken glass contained brandy or mineral water? Because, monsieur, I have never seen a director drinking mineral water in the two years that I have been here. Well, he certainly was when I was in there. Merci. Monsieur Charrier. Oui, Raymond. The police have arrived. Ah. Just in time, just in time. Now I shall be able to reveal all the... Will you pay attention, please? All the relevant facts to the police. Hmm. Well, Raymond, have you worked out who the murderer is? Oui, monsieur. Yeah, good, good, good. Well, uh, tell me quickly, because I haven't got the slightest idea. <laughs> Well, there you are, then. A murder with six suspects and one first-class idiot failing to solve it. Now, our cast have now joined us in the studio. So, panel, I want you to spin the wheel and tell me what part you would like to see again. Patrick, what part? Uh, yes, I think I would like to see a bit again. Um, I'd like to see the bit where the... Uh, there he is, yes, uh, Joe, the, the man with the strange habits. Um, is in the hallway, and I, I don't particularly want to see him necessarily, but I'd like to see the, the lady coming out of the room, but in his flashback, in his memory. Very succinctly put. Thank you, Patrick, indeed. Lindsay, what would you like to see again? I'd like to see Monsieur Jules cough it. 
Um, I mean, I'd like to that see... Well, no, actually... mean girl. I said, <laughs> I want to see where he gets his lot, where he gets done really in. You're yes. a good girl. Right, yes. you'll have it. Right. <laughs> yes, what would you like, madam? Um, I would like to see the same as what Patrick wants to see. Oh, oh would you? Please, yes, thank you. Oh, all right, <laughs> make more time for question. <laughs> Bill, Maynard, what would you like to see? No, no, it would only confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we're off to a flying start with you, Bill, aren't we? <laughs> well, while, while, we're find, <laughs> while we're finding the chips, I mean, I mean the clips, uh, that you want to look at again, let's have one question from each of you. Patrick, a question, uh, Yes, uh, Ginny, if I may, the American lady. Yes. Um, your husband was a lawyer, you said, didn't you? That's um, right. You obviously uh, treated uh, Jean-Paul, Jean-Claude Gillet uh, very well. You ought to sort of gigolo. He's a gigolo, is he? Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. We, we saw, you, you treat him well and you, you do lots of things for him. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you, I... You sort of give him money in that, do you? Uh, yes, yes, we found I'm fine. really more interested in what he does for you. <laughs> he accompanies me. Yeah. Thank you very I, much you, indeed. It's very embarrassing. Well, thank you, yes. For I, I, yes thank you. I'm not... I wasn't trying to embarrass her. Oh, I did. No, no, I'm not not a bit embarrassed. I just I wondered whether he straightforward financial agreement. Whether he would just go as far as to lady. murder for you. You see, that's what I'm interested in. Oh, certainly not. Yeah. He only does the things I want him to do, dear. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I <laughs> pay him. Thank you very him, much indeed. It? Well, I think we're, we're out of a, what could have been a very nasty situation there. <laughs> 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 Lindsay, ah. have you a question you would like to ask? Yes, to Ferdinand, <laughs> Monsieur Charrier. Uh, a couple of questions. First of all, do you know who Victor is? Victor? Yes. Do you know any Victor? Victor? Yes. A moment. Who is Victor? <laughs> 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 I'm not sure who Victor is. Oh, I see. Well, also, how did you know that 100,000 francs had been stolen? How did you know that? Because I knew that he had that on the desk. You knew that? Yes, he does the accounts every day. How did I you know that much was on the desk? Because I've been there earlier, you see. I'm clever. <laughs> before 10.32, you've been there? Oh, a long time before 10.32. And they were there then? Oh, they were. Okay. Right? Yes, Lisa? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Bottomley. Mr. Bottomley. Um, what exactly is your relationship with Miss Woods? Well, uh, I first met Irene on the uh, Fish Fryers and Butterers Convention in Wakefield. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh. She is, in fact... Uh, She's the manageress of the Dewsbury bunch of the Happy Haddock. The question is, your place or mine? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, dear. Is Wiz Ruby your wife, whom you were phoning? I'm afraid so, yes. Yes, I thought of my naughty little man. Yes. I'm finished with him. You, you finished with him, yeah. right. Yes, William. Uh, oh, 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 hello. That wasn't me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely hope not. <laughs> right. This is the buzzer for the first replay, which is yours, Lindsay. You wanted to see Monsieur Jules' final mortal words, which, if I remember rightly, was something about put that thing away. Keep watching. <laughs> yes. I told you, what are you doing with that thing? That's not going to solve... <laughs> There, how did that help? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we bother? All right. Have you a question that you'd like uh -huh. to ask about that? Um, no, not, not about yet? that at Good, all. Good, fine. Yes, something Patrick. else. One minute, Patrick. Oh. Wait, oh. Wait, <laughs> Wait, 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 may I ask you? Just to clear up something. Um, the, it was said that the, the, the money was stolen, the chips were stolen. Oui. Right, 100,000 pounds worth. Oui, oui, oui. About what size would they be? The chips? Yeah. They're the standard size. Yeah, I know. One... Jet yes. size. Jet size. <laughs> no, but I mean... May I, how may I many... interrupt this point and just show, Patrick, exactly what size the chip is? Well, uh, I want size. to know how, how much 100,000 would be in that quantity. Do you know what I mean? How big would the bundle be? Excuse me. How much would that be? Yeah, well, quite a... <laughs> Thank you. I think we can safely say... Quite a big bundle. Well, Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yes, indeed. Lisa, a question. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Charrier, did you, in fact, wait until 10.45 before you went in to see Mr. Uh, Jules? Yes. You did? It's a pity, because I could have saved his life. You could. Yes. Is he... Is, um, it, I mean, or nothing. Is the, is the Count a good customer? Does he come here? Oh, yes. Often? He buys me a drink every time he comes in. Uh, he comes in a lot, does he? He comes in quite often. He comes across from Italy and 
other foreign places. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Yes, Lindsay. Yes, yes. Monsieur Luce again. Oui. Um, having found the missing chip and then later the gun, what did you deduce from that? What did you well, think when you found them both in the same place? I beg your pardon? When you knew they were in the same place, the gun and the chip, what did you think? Seduce. Well, did you seduce. not seduce. This is might be French, I did not seduce anybody, don't mind. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, I deduced that oh. it would be the same person who, had, uh, when he took out the uh, gun, the, uh, the, the chip, that he possibly put the gun in there. I deduced and I told Mr. Charrier, who understood ah. perfectly. Mm. Yes, Bill? Yes, I, I would <coughs> like to ask a question of somebody English because I can't do a French accent. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'd, I'd really like to ask um, I, Irene, uh, Miss Woods, um, you um, obviously have an association with uh, Mr. Bottomley, and um, <laughs> you're obviously in the same business. I just wondered if, if you knew, um, you know, is he, is he very rich, in fact? Or? Well, I know for a fact he's got a very big turnover. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> he's not the only one, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Buzz, buzz. There goes the buzzer for the next replay. <laughs> it's yours, the double of Patrick and Lisa. You asked for the part of Joe Bottomley's flashback when Ginny Parker came out of the privy. I mean the director's door, Mark. Be there. Right. Just don't get excited, Mr. Jules. It was only Ginny's little gag. Anyway, thanks a million. Oh, well, that's not quite that much. All right, you too. Well, did uh, did you spot the same thing that I spotted there? Well, I think I think I did. Was it? Could I, shall I ask? Yeah, the, uh, what, what um, Mrs. Parker, in your flashback, you were inside the office, and in Mr. Bottomley's, you were outside the office. Yeah. Mm. Where in fact were you? Can yeah. you remember? Well, it's very difficult. I may have misremembered in misremembered. mind. Misremembered. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how difficult it is. I mean, if you were to think back, what what you did. Uh, well, three hours ago, so did you shout to Mr. Mower just inside the door or just outside the door? I mean, so we all make this mistake. Really. So Mr. Bottomley could be right. The only person who could tell us for sure, of course, yeah. is Mr. Jules, who's no and, longer with and us. And also, if I may butt in here, it, it does make a very difficult shot if it's outside. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow me. Yes, Patrick. Can I, can I ask uh, Simone, and this is a serious question, if she'd <laughs> mind standing up, please? <laughs> and turning round. Mm. Yes. What the hell's that got to do with what's going on? <laughs> what, what are you up to? <laughs> what uh, is, shall I tell you why? Yes, please. I'm very interested in the, the, uh, the fact of the money coming out, but also the fact that somebody had to have a gun to go in. D now, Simone, you didn't have a, a handbag, did you? Oh, yes. When you went to the... Ah, oh, can I have a look at that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little one, isn't it? They the other two ladies had very big handbags. Yeah, you wouldn't get much in that one, I don't think. No. no. Looking, for, looking for the gun, you see. The gun to go side. out. Yes, Lindsay, your question? Um, yes, yes, I had it somewhere. Oh, dear. Ah. Well, find it, Bill. Oh, yeah, no, uh, yes, I... I yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, go on, go on. Okay. I'll find it. I'll bit yes, of I'd just like, like to ask the Count. Yes. Uh, uh, Valerie, um, which, uh, which I hope is a, a surname. Uh, Count Valerie. Yes, my um, mother's <laughs> name's up. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. No, I, I just wondered when, when you when you when you heard the the uh, slight altercation in the office about the the person inside not getting the money. You 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 did a very crafty smile as if you knew something strange going on. Oh, it's happened to me plenty of times. I go to see Jules. He tell me I you not get no more money. See, I, it's always happening in the casino. Everybody runs out of money. You see, it's oh, happened I to me, so I laugh. I think it's funny. <laughs> ah. Yes, I see. <laughs> Why do I ask these questions? Well, you've got to ask something. Yes, you? I, I, suppose. I must come back to Lindsay because she was waiting to tell oh. one before. Come on, Lindsay. Oh, oh thank you so much. Um, Mr. Bottomley, when you left the room to hide that chip because of your superstition, how many chips did you go out with? Was that the only chip you actually left the room with? The one chip? Uh, uh, no, no, I had uh, some others in my pocket. Oh, you did? Yes. And when you returned, did you uh, have them in your pocket still? Oh, yes, yes. And you, d yes. you weren't holding any chips when you came back in the room? I don't know. I you can't remember. Oh. But I did have one or two in my pocket. But you don't I remember went. if you came back holding one? Yeah, no, did. I can't you remember. Did. You did, yes, yes definitely. Did. Yes. You, you did. did, yes. Yeah, they say you did. Ah. All right. Yes, yes Lisa. Oh, yeah, I, have, I have a, uh, just a little question from Mr. Gillet. Mm. Did you really not see anyone when you were in the hall? I mean, surely it'd be quite easy to see somebody. You heard the footsteps and everything, didn't you? Yes. But uh, what, you didn't see anything at all? 
No, I was in the alcove. Yes, it, yes. Okay. All right. Yes, Patrick. Uh, yes, uh, l'inspecteur Paul Charrier. Uh, you have the air of being rather a fool, if I may say so. Is that true, or is it just a, it's a manner? <laughs> I don't completely understand what you say. <laughs> Are you, uh, you said that the, the body was still warm in the room. Really? Right, when you came up. And that was, can I just check on these times? You received a telephone call at 10.32. Oui. And that was definitely from uh, the deceased. Yes. When he was alive. He you, yes, he yeah. was alive because he was talking, you see. <laughs> and at 10.45, he was dead. And 10.45, or thereabouts, he must have been dead, yes. Right. But worm. But worm. <laughs> You yes, pay Bill. attention. You? Yes, just following up on that, I, I, was, I was actually wondering, I'd like to ask um, uh, B B Ferdinand, in fact, <laughs> if, if the, the bit he did with the gun, you know, would he put his hands all over it and then said, mind you don't get the fingerprints, whether he did that just to get a laugh, which he did, <laughs> or, or for a reason. You mean I put my fingerprints on the gun? Yes, you did. <laughs> I was amazed. I'm terribly sorry. I did not realize I did that. Uh, I was not thinking of Wimon, you should have told me about this. Okay? <laughs> yes, Patrick. Uh, yes, the beautiful Simone. Can I ask you a question? Uh, when we, we've only got uh, the, the gigolo's word for what his story is, it was his flashback. When he was in the hall, uh, speaking from experience, he wasn't very good at chatting you up, was he? Really? Did he only say a little bit to you? Oh, yes, just a little. It was enough. Enough? Yes, I understood. Because when you come back in the room, he's sort of making all signals at you. Uh, and you, you didn't get a chance to talk to him again, did you? Uh, well, across the table, our eyes have met. It was enough in the, outside the ladies' room. You'd never met him before? Uh, not before today, no. Right. Thank you. Oh. Da -da -da That's it. I'm sorry, panel. Oh. Rien ne va plus. C'est terminé. I want you to fill in your roulette cards now, and any clues that you may have spotted. Meanwhile, just for you at home, one final chance to see if you can spot a vital clue. Now, this is certainly one of them. See if it confirms what you think. I'm sorry, I cannot extend your credit any further. And as for your idea of me lending you some of these chips, oh, this casino would be closed down if I did that sort of thing. <laughs> the question is, who is he saying that to? Now, panel, may I have your cards, please, Bill, William? Hmm. Oh. Yes, your card, thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Patrick? Oh, my God, we got a heart. What's that for? <laughs> Pas une étoile, mon vieux. Pas une étoile. Right, I have their cards. They can't change their minds. All right, panel. Now then, let's start from the other end, just for a change. <coughs> Bill, who done it? And any clues you may have spotted, please. At last. At last. I've got it right. <laughs> Uh, it was done by Jean-Claude in the middle there. Um, and I've worked that out because, because, in fact, he had the French accent. He was the only one with the French accent who wasn't on the staff. And I left, left the staff out of it because I'm, I'm sure they were just the light relief. <laughs> That's what they... They were here to get the laughs. And, when, and the clue is this, and this is it. When, when the phone rang and... and, and and Lance picks it, I'm sorry, and... and uh, the security man. And That's the security good. man, Ferdinand, picked it up. It, the, the voice on the other end used the wrong time, didn't mm. know what time the, the stuff was to be taken in, and he, it must have been somebody with a French accent, and he didn't suss that it wasn't... Shut up. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Bill. Yes, Pleasure. Lisa. Oh, well, I think it's Count Valeri. Valerie, sorry. Yes? Because um, he said about the broken glass. Now, only the murderer would have known that the, Monsieur Jules had a glass in his hand when he was done in, and he didn't put his ash in the plant, but at all, he put the gun in. He was desperate for money, losing money heavily, and he repeated what Monsieur Jules had said to him. He didn't listen outside the door at all. He was inside. Monsieur Jules was talking to him. Thank <sighs> you very much indeed. <sighs> <sighs> Professor Magnus Pike, thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, Lindsay DePaul, who done it? I Why? also said it was the Count Valerie. Count Valerie. Because when he went to look for Simone, he didn't mention Gie there. But Gie's story was confirmed by Simone because they were both they both said that they were talking outside. But he wasn't around when you said you went to uh, knock on the door 
of Mesdames. I see. Thank you, you are very alone. Much. You so was alone. Yes, yes, Patrick. You've done it. Very convincing, but if you're not right. I think also, like Bill, it was Jean-Claude Gier, because uh, the murder was committed between 10.32 and 10.45. 10.40, in fact, we saw it on the clock. And uh, it must have been him or, the, or Simone, who, they were outside, and I think he was telling stories when he said he was listening to the fur, when he was, you know, looking around the door. In fact, he popped in there and did it. I see. What an amazing bunch of wild guesses. <laughs> so, will the real whodunit reveal himself or herself in the nicest possible way, of course? Congratulations. Marvellous. Lisa, right on the button with the clue and all. Terrific. Congratulations, Lindsay. Well. Absolutely right. Yeah. Commiserations, Patrick. Bill? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> right, here are the details. In Gilles' flashback, when he heard the director's office door open and close, it was Count Valerie. After the murder, the Count was hiding the gun and the silencer in the plant pot when he found bottomless chip. Greed, however, made him take the chip and lose it when he got back to the table. Now, the main clue was that he couldn't have known it was a broken glass unless he'd been in the office at or since the time of death. Of course, the Count's flashback of Monsieur Jules's voice, that was a complete lie. Charrier's phone call at 10.32 lets out bottomly Irene and Ginny. But if you didn't get it right, don't worry. Monsieur Charrier still hasn't got it. <laughs> now, uh, next week, the managing director of a company gets bumped off, which could say a lot for industrial relations. But in the meantime, it's good night from our panel and our cast. And uh, next time, any of you that play roulette, but try number 13, because I've been unsuccessfully trying it for the last six months or so, and it must be about due. Good night. Bonsoir, Monsieur Dan. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.